Greetings to you all. Welcome to our demo on our third version of the Security Lab in ACI. Uh, we'll be proctoring this at Cisco Live Barcelona coming up in uh, two to three weeks here. Um, hope to see you there. My name is Goran. I'm a security TME manager and Minako Higuchi is our ACI TME that proctors this lab with me. In this third version of our lab, we are much more focused on FTD device package. We now use FTD in HA mode and orchestrate configurations from APIC to it. In the second exercise, we now change that managed service graph to unmanaged mode, but still leverage the device package manually to provision the config onto the FTD. We can also remove that configuration manually using device package. In exercise number three, we are looking at integration of our service, our next-gen firewall, into EPGs directly, what is called EPG attached, without using a contract. Then we further provision malware protection onto our uh, next-gen firewall and leverage protection and events based on that malware AMP protection to do containment of the VMs in the fabric. Last two exercises are related to ASA device package using dynamic update to EPGs as well as the policy-based redirect service graph, its benefits and mechanics. Cisco security appliances offer an exceptional level of protection in any environment. However, in Cisco ACI, our own SDN offering, we take it to the next level by using a programmatic approach with security. We can automate deployment of our appliances using device packages. We can make policies more manageable uh, by allowing APIC to dynamically update the rules. And we can rapidly quarantine infected hosts in your data center using remediation package for APIC. Let's dig into some of these items. We have device packages to help APIC push that configuration to ASA as well as FTD. Remediation module works in the opposite direction by actually using northbound APIs to talk to APIC and quarantine a particular host. Device packages allow for this division of labor in terms of what configurations here represented in blue are controlled by APIC. For example, on ASA side, you have a full control of device level configs and policies and rules while traffic when it's redirected into the firepower module here those thread policies are remaining in FMC. On the FTD device package device level configs are provisioned with APIC while these interfaces use security zones to attach into pre-configured thread policies on FMC. In the same fashion FMC controls all the intricate policies like URL filtering, AMP, etc. These are just some links on cisco.com on where to download these device packages that we use in this demo including remediation module. In this slide we are showing you a starting point of the tenant with three EPGs having its Linux hosts in them. We're going to use APIC Cobra SDK and number of Python scripts that will build this templated uh, environment that you see on the right of our tenant. Uh, this creates all the contracts, the connections between EPGs and provisions all the security in place. Um, these EPGs are not able to talk unless the security devices come up and are doing the appropriate inspections. At a later time in the demo, we're going to show you dynamic updates as well as the quarantine EPG. In our first step, we're going to use our orchestration host to communicate with northbound APIs into APIC that will use southbound APIs to provision FMC configuration that will then tell it to deploy to FTDHA pair, allowing communication between app and DB. In a step two, we're going to be going down the same lines executing our scripts into APIC, but southbound uh, APIC will be talking to ASA context on HA pair attached to ACI and provision communication between web and app hosts. 
in step three is when we provision our perimeter firewall between outside the campus and our web EPG, the same actions occur with addition to provisioning OSPF peering with the fabric and this perimeter firewall. This will allow communication from outside host to web. Once the script had completed, we would have used a programmatic method to deploy a template of our tenant with security and networking all in place before all of the applications can talk to each other. In this screen I'm showing you terminals into my web Linux, my app Linux, and my database Linux host that reside in their own respective EPGs. They have a way of establishing connectivity from web to the campus host, which is currently failing, uh, from app to web, as well as app to DB. Here on the bottom left I have a terminal into my scripting host. These are all the Python scripts they're going to be running. Um, and Besides that, I have my ASA unit in place here that's on an HA pair. It has only management interface configured and also my context on the cluster of ASA is attached to the fabric here. If we take a look at our policy on FMC, we have a pre-configured rule and we have our two FTDs and an HA pair active standby that have no configurations established there. So this is the representation of our simple tenant with isolated EPGs and we're going to be using this APIC interface to show you how everything gets built. So let's get started here. We're going to start with our first step that builds our FTD registration that um, adds the configuration for it and also the service graph and also builds that app to database contract. We're going to continue on and build our second step with our ASA device on HA pair, its configuration in APIC, as well as the service graph and the contract uh, needed for it. Uh, we'll finish up with our perimeter firewall to the fabric and campus and establish the same config, uh, L3 out, the service graphs, and also the final out to web contract there. Now we're done with all of our connectivity and we can see that we already have connectivity from app uh, to web. Um, that ping has started being successful here. That particular firewall, if we take a look at it, it has configured that interface. This is a one-arm kind of deployment here, but if I take a look at its logging, it does show that ICMP connections being um, handled there. If we take a look at our second um, perimeter firewall and we look at its configuration, it does have two interfaces that are based on a port channel, as you can see there. If I take a look at the routes, the routes, I see some OSPF routes have been populated and this firewall also allowed the connectivity after establishing that dynamic route peering with the fabric itself. So if we look at our picture here, we were able to establish connectivity between first web and app and then also outside and web host all using our ASA firewalls. What's remaining is our FTD. If we take a look at our FMC, um, we can take a look at our policy and we can see that it's out of date on one device. I can see that security zones have been applied to the rule that I had configured there previously. If I take a look at my um, device, my HA pair here, I can see that there are monitored interfaces with IPs already assigned from APIC side. So all we're doing is basically waiting for this deployment to complete and we'll then see if connectivity gets established. I will pause here and accelerate the video um, in the interest of time.
this time we can see that deployment has completed and our connectivity between app and database is working now. Next we'll take a look at the dynamic EPG updates. With device package integration we can enable APIC to program network objects in FMC with their bindings or IP addresses of hosts that belong in that EPG which inside FMC we can then use as part of the policy itself to make it more granular and make it more manageable. Go into APIC and enable attachment notification. Now we can go to FMC objects and this will take a little time but they populate with the name of the EPG profile and tenant and also um, their own binding. Now let's take a look at the quarantine advantages with remediation package. We have an FTD inspecting and blocking any attacks between app and DB and when we detect an attack we'll generate an event to FMC that triggers correlation uh, policy and executes remediation to APIC, um, in turn isolating that host using microseg EPG features in ACI. Under FMC policy actions we have a remediation module for APIC installed and under instances we define credentials and IP of APIC including the remediation type. Under correlation policies, we simply have a rule configured that identifies malware with a known disposition. Now let's watch correlation events. And in our terminals here, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to test connectivity from database to app, but on the app host, we'll execute the script that tries to get their malware sample from the database host. And we can see here that um, that download did not work. Um, it did not download all the way the file and connection was reset. And at the same time, we see that database lost connectivity to that app um, host. Uh, if we take a look at our correlation events, we can see the source and destination IPs here. And we can see that it was a malware event. This is the policy triggered and that's the rule that it executed. Looking back at APIC, we can see that we have now a microseg EPG created um, that has the IP address of my host that tried to download that malware. What I showed you in this demo is our programmatic approach with security that automates our deployment um, into an ACI fabric that simplifies our policies making them more manageable and allows us to rapidly contain infected hosts in the ACI data center. I thank you for your time and hope you enjoyed this demo.